Hello folks, welcome to the Market Internal Review for Friday, November 10th, 2023. Okay, had a bit of a range week up until Friday. Didn't make the Wednesday video, been busy with some personal matters, but we'll do a quick review of the, the overall week here. So Monday, we already had our video, but Tuesday, you see, we had quite the move up. From the low of the day to the high of the day, we had about a $3 move. And we pretty much gave all that back from the high of Wednesday back to the low. You can see we almost came back down into Tuesday's low here. Thursday, however, we had, I think, a final market slump here after j -Pal came out and discussed some things about the Fed's plans, interest rates, and whatnot. And we had almost a $5 down move. Actually, from the high, from the open, I think we did. Yeah, almost 5 bucks on the nose. So this move coincided with some pretty heavy and sudden tick here. Most of the first half of the session didn't result in a whole lot. Take special note here that on Monday, we dealt... Uh, within the first standard deviation range from last Friday, November the 3rd. Tuesday we had a breakout, but Wednesday we traded within that uh, one SD range from previous session. Same with Thursday, save for when we finally had our breakdown. Now, we had a pretty good um, break and retest TWAP entry here, and we got one SD uh, right here on this break and then we got 2ST here on this break so really nice and it coincided with a uh, first standard deviation range from uh, Wednesday's TWAP so really good I, I see this align all the time add in bold price and volume in New York Stock Exchange trend heavy alignment both the bands and the arrows are all red so great trade there broke low a day some huge engulf candles as well right after some heavy sudden tick and mercy showing squeeze which i think is why we kind of had this move back up see how we rejected previous twop uh all gosh probably for a good 20 minutes or so before finally breaking that first inner deviation low on the current session here thursday and heading down for for quite a healthy move and we floored out after about $2.20 down move. So a lot of trend balance, a lot of extreme closures, but struggling to make any more lows. And this is something that I definitely need to pay more attention to myself day over day, is when we have clusters of extreme closures and we're not actually making much downward progress. I mean, we obviously did make some, but you can see for the, gosh, from about 2 o'clock to 4, the last two hours of the session, we really didn't make a new low. It's not like this structure here. This is all real tight and fuzzy. So I need to pay more attention to that because I think that's what sets us up for what happened Friday as far as we had our gap up of about 2 bucks, And then you can see any attempts to have a bear tick here were short-lived. They did not make any substantial move down um, and interestingly though is we did have bearish volume actually from the the value the location of it we started to have more descending volume than than uh, rising volume from about 10 o'clock to 11 but that was mostly short-lived we really didn't make any progress we didn't even get back down to this tick area down here if I turn on thousand 1k tick levels looking 5,000 candles back you can see here we have a, an immense tick level here so lots of 10,000 or lots of 1,000 tick level prints have occurred here that's why this band is so thick and these are bull ticks it's, or uh, bear ticks that's why it's red bull tick up here is why it's green so lots of 1k bullish tick here so very interesting, something I should have paid more attention to because I, I definitely was surprised. Um, at the end of Thursday, I was I was thinking, okay, we've we've got some more downside, and we're finally going to see uh, from Thursday we got this big 
bear candle on spy daily and we cleared one two and three not quite four days worth of price and maybe we were going to head and break 423 down and come back into this gap and, and maybe lower so obviously friday brought us something much different and um one one of the things that i noticed was we had a, a break and retest twap entry right here almost perfectly aligned to an hour flip almost perfectly aligned to a break uh, for the upside of the previous first standard deviation twap range that's this purple range here if you've not watched these videos before when we break this though the add and bold trends are not bullish so we also even kind of have up until this next candle that will load we've got a red bearish volume per its location and we've got a bullish price but i believe at this time i believe at this time the ad was not very high yeah so only 500 so it's not typical to see you know positive albeit pretty weak but but still somewhat ascending price in the New York market but bearish volume and see such a strong move so this one caught me by surprise definitely <laughs> did not take advantage of this and I think a new rule for myself is that when there is a break and retest of first standard deviation on the session TWAP and we're we're above or about to break through previous first standard deviation range and we're definitely above prior days mid-range like we are here we're above the gap we're above previous TWAP there's a lot of reasons to be bullish here just from price and, and where it's at but I have my rules and I you know I stuck to them <laughs> but uh, I think my new rule will be you know allow myself to have a little bit of leeway where if the price does not make it very far from where the signal triggered so such as like 436.4 here and the, the bands and the trends fully align to TWAB sentiment here with this break and retest strategy that, I, that I've shared with you all, then that's, that's good enough for me to go ahead and, and maybe get in, maybe not apply as much risk to the trade since it is kind of um, not a chase, but just not quite as rigid. But if you start from here and go here and here for one SD and two SDs worth of profit, like I like to do, I mean, obviously, obviously we already know what this day brings, but, you know, this would have been a, a pretty fair entry. And the drawdown on this, I don't believe, was very substantial. And these trades to, to grab two SDs. They typically do take about two hours, um, anywhere from 50 minutes to two hours. But you can see by this point, you know, ad is at a thousand, a little bit over. Volume has flipped bullish. It struggled a little bit through here, and we even kind of see it in spy. It's it's struggling to break this 50% range level I have here on my my TWAP ranges indicator. We break through with some really strong bull tick previous day's high price right and, it, and we're going to expect to see a little bit of a retest at this point now we did fail it but we <laughs> with with some pretty strong tick here we failed it with some stronger bear tick but notice compared to the last bear ticks that we had we're still making we're still making uh, higher lows so when i see these bear ticks I'm checking to see are we making higher lows or are we making lower lows where this where these bear ticks starting to drag price down against me if I'm in a bullish position and all of these right we're continuing to make higher lows so we're good to or at least for me I'm good to continue to hold I also do check to see if we're re um, rejecting a TWAP range level and we're reclaiming an, a one below for a bullish position that I might be in if we say break this level back down then that might be something for me to consider as an early exit and not wait for two SDs worth of profit taking 
but we also have first standard deviation on the TWAP that's also coming closer to price. And as long as we're above that, then I'm I'm also still considering this as a viable hold. And we hit our two SDs right around 140. I mean, I sadly I didn't take this trade uh, again because I I have very strict rules. But uh, that was a three dollar move that we could have caught, I could have caught, rather, uh, in exactly two hours. So that was the that was definitely the A-plus trade as far as what I use. But, you know, you, you can't catch them all. Not every move in the market is for you. And that's something I definitely need to continue to internalize. But spy continues right it just higher and higher and higher we do have a period probably a good 40 minutes maybe an hour uh, i think this is starting it where we we fizzle out and we're just resting on this particular structure here Not, and you can even see the trend for your know, price is starting to lessen here weaken a little bit and then all of a sudden we get these get these big bull tick prints again out of after sustain you know, weakness here um and then whoops and then i just run it here by <laughs> loading bidu apparently <laughs> all right come on now come on now trading view so anyways so we know what happened here if, if you watch the markets but that was a, a stellar trade um wish i could have grabbed that one now it did struggle. I'll turn on the fourth deviation here. It did struggle, but it it all but made it to the fourth previous fourth deviation here, right on the the wick. I mean, I think at 440.93, and this candle's wick high is 449.3. So yeah, it actually did hit the fourth deviation to the exact cent. So. You, you know, based on what I look at, you know, I'm I very well could have caught a four dollar and thirty two cent move on on spy or, you know, t multiply that by ten for SPX or whatever for ES. But uh, this was a beautiful move. Tons of tons of movement across all the indices. Very shocking, really. I mean, we hit um, we hit many times. <laughs> Uh, over quote unquote overbought on the mercy here, um, and it coincides with some high tick. Not not every time, but yeah, I mean this high tick here. See, it they didn't capture that, and this is because we're using other internals in here. But most of the day, for the rest of the day, save for like right here, we're sticking on the green side for mercy. This squeeze didn't give us a little move down, but I wouldn't short it after this, especially not with trend showing a possible trending move this is the kind of thing i look for it's very odd though for it to start in the you know around lunchtime typically trending days get going about 30 minutes in so this is definitely a little bit atypical but you could make the argument that we didn't really have much of a you know, market structure really to contend with that wouldn't be part of a, like an anchorage for a trend. So um, this is very small range and it kind of coincides with, I don't really believe uh, in trend lines a whole lot, but this is mostly a trend here from, from low a day, previous day. So tremendous day though overall. Um, hopefully people that watch this channel have been using what I have been showing here and caught some of this $7 move. It's definitely quite the sustained move, especially for the low VIX that we have had. Now, going to the other indices here real quick. Some, some good work was done, for sure, across the whole market. So, New York market. We lost monthly TWAP. Thursday only to regain it with having gaps and everything we bounced the low price broke below it a little bit regained it on Friday okay now we lost first standard deviate or a second deviation zone 
uh, Friday before on on the third, and we've been trading down, making higher or lower highs all the way through until this Friday. So we really, for the composite, we really have not broken back over, you know, what I would consider to be kind of important pivot area right here on composite. So until we break back over that, where we had this incredible range, uh, gap range, you know, I'm not as convinced <laughs> that we're going to go higher yet. That being said, we have ripped for seven or eight days total, um, save for Thursday's, this last Thursday's move. So we, we fizzled out right here at the New York Composites 50% of this crazy daily gap that we had, one of the last ones that we had. So we still got another one down here, but we, we didn't even make it to that low. So down here, this is uh, October's TWAP price for the New York composite. So we didn't even get to that part. <laughs> we didn't get to the fun zone. So it'll be interesting to see. We had some pretty strong rejections uh, last Thursday on the 9th. And then Friday, that's right where we finally kind of petered out here. It's also a previous day high, so hard to say, you know, why it moves to that particular spot and fizzled out. But we already looked at SPY. Well, we'll look at SPY here real fast. So SPY did break back out uh, into second deviation zone. We cleared a, a major monthly TWAP level. I did see a little bit of a broadening formation, which if you ever looked at, um, different trading methodologies. There's there's definitely some interesting um, trading strategies around broadening formations. Not really covering that on this YouTube channel, at least not right now. But there's definitely a pretty clear. And again, I don't use these all the time. Um, I don't really trade off of them. I mean, sometimes maybe I will, but. I mainly use market internals, but uh, there's definitely a trend line here. I can't deny that. And, you know, whether or not that's the reason we stopped where we did, I, I don't know. But I think it has more to do with the New York composite. But anyways, the second deviation high is definitely a strong breakout. The October high price that we had, we cleared that. And we actually did have a pretty decent retest that touched it. So I think this is why we broke over previous day high came back below previous day high, which normally I think people would say that would be like a fake break over previous day high and they would look to go short. But in this case, we basically topped out this line might not be 100% accurate. So, you know, maybe it should be right up here. I don't know. But anyways, we basically tested right on that October high and then we <laughs> yeeted right over it. So, and that's after a, a mercy squeeze. That's after a whole lot of things. So, Pretty impressive that we had so much momentum with, uh, you know, with what was going on. But you see, I was tracking this broadening formation with uh, the other indices as well. But this uh, Q's, I think Q's is really a big reason we have pumped so much. Uh, we'll go look at a couple other individual names, and you can kind of see why. But tech is doing its usual techie thing again. Um, past that mercy squeeze that we had, it had already broken over previous day high, cleanly testing this 50% monthly TWAP level, already broke out. It's way over first standard deviation. I mean, at that point, it's, uh, it's starting to contend with second deviation high end of the, the second deviation range. Just, I mean, crazy cumulative price action, just real strong. Dow, honestly, kind of the same thing, though we had made a new low before we ripped, and we took much of the day to break previous day high, but this is a pretty strong Dow trend, and not as impressive as Q's, not as strong as Q's, still have more work to do, and you can see, even with this band and this band here, we're mostly flat, so Dow is still more range-locked than the other indices, but we are still dragging the monthly TWAP up. And now with us over the first year deviation on monthly, I think you know we'll we'll see some more things out of the Dow and Dow names. Um, the accumulation was definitely more balanced. Looking at Russ though, so Russ is the one that's got me the most concerned. 
this is definitely more of a shift where it seemed like for some time now, Russ was giving me the signal as to what the kind of overall market sentiment would be looking like from an economic standpoint, small caps being, I believe, more the collection of stocks, the small companies that are being impacted. Obviously, your big tech names, they're able to pull more shenanigans, financially speaking, and they have a lot more capital, a lot more choices and things they can do versus small caps. But now, they did pump, obviously, with the rest of the market, but they're lagging quite a lot compared to the other indices. Every one of the other indices is you know beyond first standard deviation high at this point, breaking over the previous day high, breaking over monthly TWAP, and we're not really seeing any of that on Ross. So we we actually struggled um, to even hold the gap range. You know we were coming down here testing previous day low. That's where we had a bounce, and you know maybe that's why the other indices didn't make it any lower than they did because Ross finally started to get in line and show us some kind of strength here reclaiming previous day uh, mid-range but we rejected monthly TWAP multiple times and we're below October TWAP price so we had struggled around that for last Wednesday last Thursday um, just really flirting with that quite a lot throughout this last week and just not really giving me a lot of confidence that the small caps have what it takes to to kind of break out with the rest of the indices. I was kind of expecting them to come further back down, especially after ripping for however many days, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven days, rip straight up, right, to this monthly trend line I've got, right up to 50% of this gap on the daily chart. And, you know, previously, the RSIs definitely started to peter out around 60%, uh, well, not 60%, but 60 And so definitely, you know, I was thinking, okay, towards the end of this week, we're going to start seeing some bearishness. Uh, for Thursday on the 9th, I was like, okay, here we go. Some some stuff's making sense now. Um, but, you know, then Friday comes along. So looking at this, though, <sighs> I, I really, I don't have much. So I did say back when, when we were here, that was expecting maybe a little bit of a bounce before lower. Obviously, uh, there was no lower. There was just bounce. <laughs> and I did say that, you know, once we started to get here, I think it was on the video for this Friday, that it felt a little different from previous times where the growth chart had the growth names and, and the chart had us up here because uh, not to, set, to be repetitive, but the, the moves back up to get us from, from lows to midpoint were real tiny in comparison of the moves that took us from the midpoint to the lows. So I'm not going to do it again, but I believe it's like a 30 point move and then only a 15 move uh, point move back up. Same thing here, right? We had about a $30 move. Uh, down here and then this time though we had about a $30 move back up so that's where I was like mm, you know maybe maybe this isn't a top but I had to kind of con continue to consider it was given how many times it has shown us a top uh, since <laughs> uh, gosh it's been showing us tops for quite some time since late August gosh I think even earlier than that. Yeah, I mean, this was July. I mean, we had come from, from higher, though. But, you know, July was a pretty good top. All these were tops. But, yeah, every midpoint touch breaking out over here at 60 has been a top since August. So that's September. That's October. And, you know, so there wasn't much reason for me to discredit that and consider this time it was different it's just that it seemed different in that the retracement move to go along with this was equal to the downward move that brought us down so apparently this time maybe i maybe i was right my my gut instinct of it is you know it seems different you know it was different for sure tech obviously on the rsis we can see here what's causing the the spy to move so heavy is predominantly the tech. 
I mean, energy even did start to curl down, but it was already way at lows. So seeing, uh, you know, seeing spies, RSI, seeing some of these other ones actually start to hit 50 before being jerked back up, it's pretty impressive. So this was a ton of the market doing this. Um, finance specifically had 35 mil volume, a monumental amount from what we've been seeing. Not a lot of the other spiders. Uh, energy had 17, but I'll be honest, I don't track their their averages, so I don't know. I should probably add an average to this, I think actually, but I'll have to I'll have to look into doing that. But even Spy itself at 89 million volume, that's really not that impressive from what we had been seeing. We I think we had like 100, 107, 110 mil a day. Um, I think it was one of these days. I could turn volume on, but I'm not going to right now. So looking at SPY 500 stocks above 50-day average, uh, we're just back at the midpoint here. So last time we were at that, they, it was the top. <laughs> we were definitely below on a lot of these to 20-day. Petered out here, but we're bouncing midpoint. So very interesting. A lot of This kind of lines up with growth. I guess it, probably because they're both 20-day. The growth is 20-day, so 200 moving average so we're really hugging around this 40 percent oh look at that dang i wish i would have seen that here i go again <laughs> wishing i would have seen something in hindsight but ain't that the way it goes here's july time frame wow look at that almost a perfect top detection there all right i'm gonna have to start watching this now <laughs> we already know the 200 days pretty strong 100 day is also pretty strong. Look at that. There was a good top. There was a good bottom. Dang, man. Yep, that could have been a good bottom. That was definitely a good bottom. So, what does this mean? If we look at, take, turn the RSIs off. We look at this. I mean, this tells me that we got a ton of room that we could go, but we have hit this many times before and definitely seen how it was kind of the end. So this time though, look if, if we're looking right at SPY, I mean we closed this gap finally. This gap had provided a ton of resistance in the past here. And now we've finally broken out. But we've we definitely have left some gaps down here. Not every one of them's filled. You know, we got gaps from <laughs> 50 years ago that, you know, not highly doubt we'll ever fill those. So gosh, five day. Even five-day average for S&P 500, we're not even in the, the strong bull zone yet. So that's pretty impressive. So by a lot of these, I'm seeing that that we still got some room. So S&P 100 above five-day, we're still at 50%, still some room there. 20-day, okay, 20-day, we're starting to, for the top 100, we're starting to maybe see a little bit of a top. Interesting. Okay. So really fast, we're going to go look at a couple of tech names because I, I do think they're quite interesting. I'm going to turn off turn off a couple of things here. I'm going to turn off gap zones. Well, I'll leave ranges on. All right, so Apple, right? Look at that. Very strong trend. Microsoft. Microsoft has been incredibly strong. <laughs> There's one even more surprising. So Microsoft just made a new high, all-time new high. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, actually on Friday. So they're almost at 370 now. Just tremendous trend. I mean, zero weakness at all. So wouldn't spy and cues. We're kind of testing and doing their thing uh, here in the morning session. Right. So even this weekly gap that's behind the daily gap, we're testing the lows of that. You know, Microsoft's like, whatever. <laughs> we're not going any lower and just rip the whole day. Meta is also doing similar things. I think they had a little bit of weakness on Friday morning. Okay, yep, they had they had a little bit of a uh, drawback almost the previous day mid, but they did not finish before they <laughs> God before they did whatever the heck this is. That's insane. They did basically flatten out after the that kind of move there. But uh, Nvidia. So NVIDIA, man, they've really slid under my radar. Now, this is not really an impressive trend overall. It's 
definitely more rangy, but the fact that they're almost back to 500 bucks, that's just incredible. I mean, they're, they're 16 bucks away, not even $15 away from being around $500 again after lots of struggling, but all that gap high, uh, that we had where every day we were making a gap. It, uh, Nvidia was receiving a ton of pump from that. I mean, look at this. <laughs> that gap is insane. So just end of October, Nvidia was at 392. 392. <laughs> 392, and they're already almost back up to 4 490. Let's just say four ninety two, right? Almost a hundred dollars in in two weeks per share. Insane. So all of this running, right? Amazon, uh, they're doing similarly. Um, Google is one that has not been following suit, but <laughs> Amazon, they had a, they did, they pulled a meta. They kind of had that pullback, and then. Whoosh, but then they continue much higher. Ah, yeah, it's definitely tech. I mean, if I go look at other names, they're they're not doing this kind of stuff. Tech is definitely behind this. Um, just really impressive. So the the week ahead, I don't know what kind of ec uh, economic type news we've got. Okay, core inflation. FOMC minutes. Jolt's job openings, that's not until December. So not a whole heck of a lot for the rest of November. I mean, a couple things. And then as far as earnings go, not seeing a whole lot. So, you know, there's obviously still um, things going on in the world that can impact. I know seasonality in November is supposed to be pretty green. We've got the holidays coming up. This is the last quarter. I imagine things will kind of slump into as we head into December towards the the end, you know, holidays. So overall though, I I can see them pushing us higher at this point. The market could at this point could go all the way back up, right? We got 450 to contend with. Uh 50% of this candle over here has kind of made a range, you know, it, it's clearly standing out to me from the rest of these uh candles here. We have the, the 10 over the 20 on the daily chart. So we're popped over the 100, back over this monthly trend. Obviously, we're over the 200, we're over the 50. So if we can continue to hold this, then, I mean, obviously, we can go to any price, but I would be interested to see if we can't tag 446 and then 450 next. So 446 specifically just because of this candle right here. It's just really sticking out like a sore thumb. And then I would imagine... If we can start clearing some of these relative highs, then you know maybe 455.7, the, the midpoint of this candle here is kind of standing out. But yeah, hopefully you had a good week uh, trading. Hopefully you had a good Friday. Uh, sorry with all the personal things I've had. I really have not had a huge amount of time to post on Twitter, and I skipped out on Wednesday's video. This week I've got some other things going on still, so it might be light for uh, Twitter or X. And it might be light for YouTube as well. I'll do my best, though, to post at least one video um, before Fridays. So, it, and Fridays might come out on the weekend, kind of like this one. Hope you had a great weekend. And, uh, yeah, thank you for watching. And as always, happy trading.